free energy now. Imagine a world in which each home has its own power generator that obtains its energy in such a way that no fuel has to be added. Imagine every vehicle being able to run without ever stopping for fuel. Imagine each appliance having its own power source that never has to be recharged. That is the world of the future. Join with us now as we track our progress towards such a world. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Sterling Allen. You can join us online at freeenergynow.net, where you can find a list of past guests, download those interviews, and read the stories associated with those shows. On May 14, 2013, I had a casual interview with Roger Green, CEO of ECAT Australia. He has been involved in helping secure distributor licenses for Andre Rossi's ECAT for many territories worldwide. Following are some excerpts from our conversation. You can find Roger online at ecataustralia.com. That's e-cataustralia.com. Hi, Stelly. Hey, Roger. How you doing? Very good. I do have some other licenses that are kind of left in the world uh -huh. that I'm still networking. You know, there's still you know a, a, a few things happening in Europe and uh, the Middle East. So um, I can always chat with them. Okay. So what's the latest with uh, in your department? Anything happening? Yeah, there's always cool stuff going on. Sure is. Um, the things take a lot longer, cost a lot more. Yep, yep. I'm very familiar with that scenario. <laughs> I think we all are. It's yeah. A, as you know, it's a lesson in patience, you know. Yeah, it is. We're all passionate about this, and we all want to see things move move as fast as possible. But boy, you got to sometimes kick back and let things be, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, the Rossi seems the, the thing about Rossi. He's, he's always moving forward uh, bit by bit, as you've probably been tracking. Um, you know, uh, so that's that's good news. Uh, you know, he's, he's got, apparently he's got, you know, uh, an ECAT on its way to America. He's got a big USA partner now from yeah. what he's been blogging about. And he's, he's personally told, you know, a few of us that that's the case, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it's everything, like everything, we just, you know, need more data and more independent, you know, tests. And that's what the customers want now. They, we've got, I've got serious customers around the planet, but... You know, they're, they're, you know, it's 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 a risk for people until they see one actually, you know, in a real life situation, and nobody's prepared to take the first step with that. Or at least we haven't found anybody yet. Mm -hmm. But uh, Rossi guarantees that everything's going to work, and as you know, he's made some headway with the hot cat. Mm -hmm. That report's supposed to be coming out soon. It was due to come out soon. Yeah, we had a good interview with him um, a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if you listened to that. I've, heard, I, I've been on the road, but I heard reports of it. Some people, you know, emailed me saying they, it was, a, it was yeah, how did, how did it, do you have a recording of it? Yeah, if you go to PESN.com yeah. and you go back a couple of weeks, you'll see the, I did a report of our interview where uh -huh. I covered all the key points and then there's also uh, you can listen to the audio actually it's a YouTube video that you watch of the presentation uh -huh. where there's some slides that are shown it, one of the questions I'm curious as you're selling these licenses around the world and people are not yet able to get a good um, data based um, input are you Take, putting money in escrow, or how's that working? No, um, well, most of the people who have invested are friends of friends and family members and biz my own business associates, and so there hasn't been, or I've traveled and I've personally met them, and I give them all the available information, mm -hmm. and I make it very clear to them that basically this is risk capital, that this is still emerging uh, technology, and uh, 
and that you know the the, the reason why the the price is re, you know fairly reasonable. I mean, as you know, Rossi has been that they're quite reasonably priced these licenses for what they potentially can be, mm -hmm. and so people are not really risking too much. I mean, quite frankly, Sterling, like when I organised Africa. It's, you know, people are only risking, you know, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, you know, and I've got it sprinkled over a whole group. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, they're just uh, friends of friends and colleagues and so forth. So nobody except me, I've, I'm the one who risks the most. You know, I've got like nearly, you know, $400,000 invested in, in all of this. Uh, I'm, I'm the largest risk taker, you know, in my group. And everybody else is just very, you know, small uh, nuts and seeds. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I've, I've made it very clear that it's, you know, it's risk capital. It's still emerging. We still haven't sold an ECAT. The, te the basic tension is if it wasn't emerging and if we sold one, then you could add a few more zeros to these uh, licenses, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that's basically being the general scenario, you know. And uh, it's just basically they buy equity uh, into a territory. And then, for instance, take Spain. We, we formed a company and then everybody's issued uh, share certificates. Uh, when I organize Japan, you know, we're, we're forming a company in Singapore. And uh, so that's the way it's done. You know, we, we secure the license. We form a company. We issue share certificates and the equ equity and then... Basically, we, you know, it's an organic uh, movement, you know, we're, we're slowly making, I'm slowly making contacts in all of these countries. Um, you know, I've got some good, starting to make some good contacts in Japan and Vietnam and Cambodia. And uh, eventually we want to get, uh, you know, some uh, delegation out to see the ECAT working, you know. Yeah. I mean, I've attracted really good people. I haven't attracted any any pains in the asses, you know. They're they're very patient. They're very philosophical. I mean, basically, I've attracted a lot of philosophers and dreamers and poets, with a, a sprinkling of you know a few engineers, you know, and um, so that's the you know uh, what I've attracted, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so they're all very patient. They understand the logistics here. And uh, as I say, for most people, it's not a, a huge, you know, it's not like I've put, every, I've put my life savings in and mortgaged houses, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a big risk for me. But then, you know, that's why I've ended up spearheading some of these other licenses because basically I've been supporting Rossi now for 14 months and my, you know, raising capital obviously has enabled him to keep things moving and he's appreciated that and he's giving me special prices on some of these licenses and then I just network it. So, for instance, you know, there's the pretty much all of the Middle East without Israel, you know. that's a, I, I group territories together too sometimes. I negotiate mm -hmm. with them, you know, like a block of countries. And uh, most of Europe has been sold. There's only things like uh, Hungary and Romania and Bulgaria, Ukraine, that is left in. Uh, yeah, you know, there's only there's only a handful of licenses left. You realise that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Middle East, um, there's a little bit of equity left in Portugal, uh, but then basically the only re European countries left are Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, and Ukraine. And then the Middle East, and that's it. All of the Middle East? No. The UAE has been sold. Saudi Arabia has been sold. Israel has been sold. But then basically, you know, everything else, um, which is not a nice little package, you know. For instance, uh, Palestine, you know, West, West Bank and Gaza, uh, Lebanon, uh, then basically Syria and Iran, and I, in the contract I have, as long as there's no USA trade embargoes, because, I mean, I have a long-term approach with this. You know, what about in five years' time? You know, they could be totally different countries. Mm -hmm. Iraq and uh, uh, Qatar and Yemen and uh, Bahrain. So that's, that's so you, as you can see, there's several countries that are looped into one territory, one license. Mm -hmm. And those are all called Middle East? I just call it as, I call that, now, yeah, that's the Middle East, geographically. 
and I just call it the Middle East license, you know, without Saudi Arabia, UAE, and uh, Israel. Mm -hmm. What about what's left in uh, Africa? All gone. I I negotiated with Ross. He asked me to organize Africa, and I said to him, I'll do that as long as it's the whole African continent. It will be mm -hmm. just a headache to start dividing it up into north, south, east, west, and this country and that. There's this 53 countries, mm -hmm. and most of them, as you know, uh, third world, but they're desperate for something like, you know, the ECAT, especially, you know, if he keep, gets that temperature up and we can produce electricity, it's a, mm -hmm. it's amazing, you know, just imagining the, the kind of just shipping the ECATs in, bolting on some generators, and we've got remote electricity to to bring a whole continent out of poverty. That's what that's been my pitch. Mm -hmm. and, um, so it's all the whole African continent, and I've got 17 investors for that, and we've got the whole license from north to top. You know, uh -huh. yeah, all of the countries that are geographically on that continent is in, in one license. So the 17 investors are all um, share holders so to speak of the 50 of the continent yeah so it's one company and they own that owns the equity in all of that continent and then depending on how much they invested they get you know equity in that company so some people it might be four percent some people ten percent some bigger investors went for thirty percent etc mm -hmm. what about um, South America that's all taken that South America, North America, and Canada are pretty much taken with Rossi's, you know, uh, partner. Uh, so there's a big, I don't, we don't know who it is, but there's a big company that is uh, at the same time, you know how he's talked about selling the manufacturing rights? Mm -hmm. Well, that, that company, whoever they are, has also, it, it's got the distribution rights for North and South America and China and Russia. And that's why he's shipping an ECAT over to America for these guys, to, I think, to install it somewhere so that eventually clients can come along and look at it in a secure location. I think that's the ploy. Yeah, that would be a very limited showing, not a public kind of thing. Yeah. I could always get somebody in, but uh, it would be definitely by, by invitation only. And I imagine you would be glad to be there and see it for yourself as well. I certainly would. But essentially, my license, uh, you know, I have Australia, Australasia. And, uh, and basically, when I get things organized, I'm just going to, uh, Rossi's just going to put it on to my license, Antarctica. Uh -huh. What about um, Asia? Uh, that's that's what myself and my family seriously invested in. Uh, it, from so you're you're hanging on to that one. You're not giving it away. I'm not giving anything away. Uh, we we we've invested or basically, or from Japan, you know, all the way through to Burma. Uh, we've we've we've, we've, we've Myself and my family, and then uh, investors. We've we've secured those licenses, mm -hmm. and then I've got a partner uh, who invested with me in India. So um, geographically, I think you know it's kind of like a we've ended up with about a third of the world, you know, or a mm -hmm. quarter, a quarter. Um, once these things start selling. Um and start being manufactured, um, I guess that's when th this small investment starts paying huge dividends? Yeah, like any other business, it would take two to three years to get it established and get it organized. Uh, it's got potential for, you know, sub-licensing and uh, it's got potential for any kind of, w any way we want to do business development. There's several options there, but that's the general scheme is that the value of their shareholding, you know, if they bought shares for 50 cents, 
it's like any other company. One expects, you know, after five years that those shares will be worth, you know, ten dollars. How do you, do you understand how he plans on rolling out the manufacturing of this? Um, how how territorialized is that going to be? Um, is it going to be one huge plant in one place on the earth, or is he going to just um, spread that out quite a bit? I, I I understand that there's going to be something up in Sweden. There's going to they've got something already in the U.S. working up a mass production operation in the U.S. Um, but I don't have much of a feel beyond that. Um, did he, did you pitch that question to him in in the interview? Did he have it? Not in it? that wording. No. Um, it's something that's. I have. I don't really know. Uh, it's something that you would have to ask Rossi about. Uh, basically, as you know from his blogs, he's got a USA manufacturer lined up, and one imagines there's going to be a few more around the world. That's all I know. Uh, I, I. There's just speculation, but one would imagine he would need a few dotted around the world to, you know, supply and demand, basically. But I, I don't know, uh, Sterling. So these the, the licenses that people are getting, is it basically a, a distribution license? Yes. They're distribution licenses. They're not manufacturing licenses. Okay. Because that's a whole different kettle of fish. That's serious stuff. Uh -huh. That's where, you know, we're talking millions and millions, whereas the distribution licenses are, you know, reasonably priced. So all of these licenses that you've been doing have all been distribution licenses? Yeah. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so if somebody wants to buy one in Burma, they go through that distributor. That's and, right. And the earth is almost completely parceled out. There's a few um, straggler countries left. Exactly right. The ones that I mentioned, which I've got first option on. I'm... I'm Presently, you know, I just spent two weeks in Europe with uh, business uh, investors, you know. As you know, it takes weeks for people to make decisions. Mm -hmm. I've been running around the world 40, for 14 months now. It's been a full-time job for me. That you're financing out of your savings and just your investment into this? Yeah. When you do a license for an area that's not necessarily yours, you're bringing somebody to the table, I imagine that you're getting a share of that as you uh, make that sell for Andrew Rossi? Yes. Yeah, I just negotiate each each one. There's different players. We all sort it out. Everybody's happy at the end. And is that something that's bringing you direct revenue right now, or is that no, something no. that you get not equity? One. No, just equity. There's, not, there's nothing bringing me revenue, not one cent. We don't get revenue, Sterling, until we you know, start selling ECATs. Now, let's talk about selling ECATs for a minute because um, in the show, in the interview that I did with him, we kind of ed ended on that note. I asked the question, if somebody were to plunk down money today for an ECAT at a one megawatt plant, what would be the expected lead time for that plant to be delivered and installed? And he said four, uh, four months. Yeah. Um, and so are they still 1.5 million for one megawatt? Yep. Yep. With about three to four months delivery time. Basically anyone on the planet right now could buy one. And that would they need to go through their local distributor to make that purchase? Yep. Yep. Because pretty much the world, that's the way it's done. They would have to go through that uh uh, distributor, that's correct. What's the primary website or is there one for directing traffic for potential sales? Well, you know, Rossi's with the Swedish guys have got ecat.com mm -hmm. and basically if he got a serious inquiry, he would just put it also back onto the local territory so it would be coordinated that way. Uh, there's no one website that's got everybody else's uh, content. We're all you know, it's it's still, for instance, people are still just getting their acts together in that department. Mm -hmm. I, um, the, the Swedish boys pretty much were the first, and then I was the second who to, who to put up a website, you know, ECAT Australia. Um, 
We've got one for South Asia. Actually, I I had the first website up. You know that story. <laughs> no, I don't know that story. Yeah, before ecat.com showed up on the scene, it was almost the same day I put up a website. It was the next day on 11-11-11. Um, I put up leonardoecat.com, and I can't remember where there was a hyphen in there. It's still up. Um, I had been working with Andrew Rossi uh, saying, hey, you know, I'd like to put up some kind of web presence for you so people can get information about the product and and kind of get the story, get a newsletter. And he gave me a nominal thumbs up to do that. And I was walking through with him the... Um, the building of the site uh, had a couple mornings with him, including the morning of 11, 11, 11. And he's like, yeah, go go ahead and publish it. You know, it looks good. And, of course, this is Andrew Rossi talking where he his attention to detail is, is uh, not, uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, it's not anywhere near a 10. Yeah. Um, you know, he, he's, he's kind of the lay of the land, look at the general picture, not look at the details and minutia. So... He, he he, almost wanted it. Well, he wanted to just give me a thumbs up in a 10-minute conversation and good to go. And I said, no, let's please, could, could we walk through some of these pages and just take a look? And so I was kind of able to beg and get him to stay on the call for another 30 minutes or so, right. um, talking about, yes, this is okay, uh, change that, and this is okay, this is fine, fine. But But he was in a hurry and wasn't paying attention, so the site went live. And we started getting bombarded with all kinds of critical comments. It looks awful. You, this is like a 10-year-old website. Why, why aren't you using modern stuff? And and you shouldn't be doing this. And you, you shouldn't be having this name listed here. And this. And, and so he he kind of uh, turned tail and and said, uh, I don't know about this. And and he was actually telling people that he did not authorize the website even right. though he had, and, and uh, so that put egg on, I mean, that, that made me look bad, like I was just presuming right. to put up a website for him when and you're and saying things. it was official, and it was official, yeah. technically, but, but it hadn't gone through the rigors of what a technical, uh, an official website should with the people who know the answers to the questions, reading all the verbiage and, and having a week to review it and et cetera, that, that just didn't happen. And, and that has largely to do with his personality, which, you know, you basically take what you get. And, yeah. and we, you know, we, we understand that about him and, and we forgive him. And, and so, you know... It, but there's no bad, bad blood, you know. He's, he still respects you. You still respect him, uh, you know. Yeah, I think overall we we walked away shaking hands. It it, it did create some some uh, bad feelings for a little bit on both sides. But it was like the next day or so the ecat dot com came out and announced right. their site, right. and he gave his um, thumbs up. This is the official website and right. has been ever since. But anyway, I just thought I'd throw that in that actually I was yeah. the first one up. Oh, uh, that's a, no, I haven't heard that story. That's a good one. Yeah. Um, but anyway, back, I have another question about, you're talking about the people who are coming in and buying these licenses are more of the poets and the romanticists of what the future could be. Um, do you think there's going to be a bit of a problem of skill set and talent requirement? It, it really is a mixture, a nice mixture of people. But by the way, I do have some very serious scientists on board who've invested. They're very mature scientists, by the way. Put it this way, it's a mixture of people who uh, have a technical background, but also other people, they're not so technical, they just see the potential and they want a better world, so to speak, and, and they want to support something like this. They want to see, you know, when I say poets and, and philosophers, they're the ones that are really you know, their heart is in a, in a new, better world, so to speak, with less carbon, uh, uh, you know, fossil fuels. So that, that's what I meant by the, the philosophers, you know. Are, are they going to be the ones tasked with actual, actually deploying the actual um, distribution networks? Well, I have, that's, that's my task along with, see, each license, imagine Africa, right? There's, there's, let's just say there's 20 investors, right? 
Well, about four or five of them are really serious. They, they, they are hands-on. Mm -hmm. And they, we're going to be basically devoted to this for the rest of our life. And the other uh, people aren't hands-on, they're silent partners. So there was always a choice, you know, it's up to you if you want to be hands-on or you want to be a silent partner. Mm -hmm. And each of these licenses, there's about four or five who are active who have got very good uh, credentials and, and, you know, they come from corporate. Uh, they're all mature, so 50 onwards and uh, very uh, talented people. So that we're the ones that are going to be spearheading, you know, uh, its rollout. So once one of these, uh, supposedly, in, in the next few weeks, we're going to have this plant up and running that people can come and see and look, people being those who are under NDA, who sign the necessary safety disclosures and are given the adequate training to show up and and know where not to kick the tires so that, you know, they're, they're not jeopardizing any kind of... Um, and he also, he, he made the, a funny statement in the interview. He said, this is not a circus. Yeah. You know, this everyone and their dog's going to want to come see this thing, but the only people who deserve and should see it are people who are serious players who have a need to know. Yeah, they're all going to be scrutinized. I mean, obviously, say, if I have you know, a group coming from, say, Japan and Cambodia, which would be a mixture of government officials and industry, that, you know, I have to totally scrutinize them and they'll be under the NDA and, that, yeah, it's not a circus, it's a, a selected audience, you know. So once that plant is in, in operation, um, then I would imagine the sales will start come flooding in. You know, Sterling, we only need one or two uh, megawatts to be purchased and installed in a realistic situation, as in like a real life situation, as and and then people can come and see it. Uh, then then we've got over a hurdle. At the moment, it's that you know, like if you if you run a company or you're employed uh, for about you know from a company and you're the guy who's supposed to be purchasing things. You're not going to be spending 1.5 million bucks on something that's been untested, correct? Right. You know, nobody's going to risk their career. It has to come from above, and uh, those people are sort of waiting on the fence for the first person to do it. Unfortunately, we haven't found anybody brave and, uh, you know, visionary to actually take the first step. That's all. And that's that's going to happen soon. Well, I would imagine, too, for, for a... Um company safety point of view of bullseye disbursement, so to speak, you don't want to be, you want to have three or four units up and running before you have one that goes public that people can come in, you know, it's more wide audience media and others who could come in and, and kick the tire, so to speak. Yeah. So just for the, from a safety point of view, if it's not the only thing that's running that people can come see who are potential um, buyers. But don't you, does, does Rossi have an understanding with you that once um, this U.S. customer goes into, once they're up and running, that you will be able to take some of your select, you know, the most promising leads that you have for purchasers, um, that they will be able to come in and see it? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's the intention, that he's setting up, you know, the USA place and the European place, you know, North Italy, so that people can actually come and witness the one megawatt ECATS running. So I didn't know about the North Italy one. Is that the military one? Because he said there's only two that have been installed so far. No, no, that's his factory in North Italy. Okay. North Italy is where the factory is? Yeah. It has been there for mm -hmm. some time. There in Bologna? Well, it's been moved to, you know, about 20 miles just outside of Bologna. But, um, he, and he's also, you know, apparently, they're probably doing one in the USA. I mean, he spent, he's going to be obviously spending a bit of time in the USA because of this new USA partner, and they're obviously getting things put in place, you know, for people to come. 
mm-hmm. but one presumes he's also going to be keeping the factory in North Italy. I mean, that's where he did all the hot cat testing. And, you know, he's uh, that's where he, he built his one megawatt to ship to the USA. Yeah, apparently they're... The customer received three things, the one megawatt, the hot cat um, module, and a natural gas powered module. Uh-huh. It's kind of proof of concept for them to test and play around with. Something like that. Yeah, that stands to reason. Well, Roger, I really appreciate um, you taking some time with me. What I'll do is I'll write this up and pass it by you to get any corrections that need to be made, things that maybe shouldn't be going on the record yet. Yeah, if you don't mind, I'd appreciate that. If you could do me a favor and, yes, sort of make a, a summary of that. I, I, Quite frankly, Sterling, I would have to run it past uh, Andre, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. For you, for you to publish it. Yeah. I don't see any problems now. I mean, the more... Quite frankly, the more people need to, you know, get to know me and what's been going... Because, you know, there's a few negative websites and they come up with all sorts of shit, as you know. Mm-hmm. And people do need some clarifications. So, like, I'm happy to clarify the way I've been going about doing these licenses. It's not like, you know, it's not a shady deal. It's it's a very straightforward deal. Yeah. It's like any other investment in emerging technology, you know. We've yeah. all been there and done that. And uh, it's very straightforward. Uh, so I, I don't mind a, a little bit of clarification with some of these things, and people need some information. Sounds good. Yeah, well, good catching up, and thanks for all the work you do, mate. It's, uh, it's good work you do. You know, what's, another what's, thing, um, yeah. as we get other technologies on board, um, for example, there's this company out of India who's got a self-loop motor generator system where a small motor turns a larger generator with a net five kilowatt there's there's zero input once you get the thing up to speed and they're licensing their technology and they're going to be doing a demonstration in India New Delhi and he's going to be pulling me over there for that and he is doing licenses for that and I would imagine that you may have people in your Rolodex either uh, I don't I don't know that it would be perceived as a conflict of interest, kind of like you go to Walmart to sell competing products on the same aisle. You've got several different cereals and whatnot. So these people who are do- doing distribution for Rossi um, may or may not be the, you know, maybe you met people who are the just the wrong fit for Rossi who could be a good fit for this. Oh, look, I, I totally agree. I think there's all, there's, you know, the, 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 the sky is open for just really good ideas and technology that works. And I personally don't see any of the emerging technologies as competition for anything except for fossil fuels, which is the name of the game, you know. Um, so uh, I think that there's good synergy. And on that level, don't forget, you know, yes, you've you got the ECAT, but then it's got potential for all sorts of bolt-on technology that has to be produced mm-hmm. that's innovative. I mean, don't forget, I mean, something that I'd be happy for you to mention is the, you know, the innovative bolt ide- bolt-on ideas that, we've, that Bill Donovan and I presented at the Zurich conference. I'm still working hard on that. I mean, we really want to build that Tesla turbine, uh, that's the most efficient turbine, you know, it's better than Siemens. And, you know, we want to be the ones that are bolting on that technology to the hot cat to then produce electricity, you know. Yeah. And desalination is another potential. Is any synergy with the ECAT? I mean, that the, the ECAT is going to spearhead a whole new revolution in technology. And it's, it's kind of like the invention of the Internet. It's just going to spur on a lot of, you know, innovation everywhere. Uh, that's the way I see it. So yeah, it's, absolutely. It's not competition, it's just synergy. And at the end of the day, the best ideas get there, you know? Just from a manpower point of view, you, you want to take things on in, in a bite-sized piece, and if you're taking on two huge projects at the same time, you jeopardize both. Are you talking about the, on a personal level? Well, I'm talking about this whole notion of introducing you to another technology that you could then present to the people that you've been talking to in, in these licenses for the ECAT. And in making the decision as to who to approach about this, that would be one of the criteria. Could they handle two projects at the same time? 
Well, as you know, it's just a matter of the nature of the technology. I don't, I don't really know much about the, this technology you're talking about. I'd have to investigate it myself. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know anything about it, but it's just uh, if there's some synergy there, then if, 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 if there can be some pairing and working together, that's, that's the place we're coming from. Yeah, I don't... The, the synergy, perhaps, is that the ECAT is an industrial application whereas this would be a home production. It's a different audience. It's a different beast altogether. Um, and the home sell audience would be a, a good cross-sell of the, once the residential ECAT comes online, you would then have your network of distribution set up. You say, okay, now we've got a home heater for you. Um, now that you've got your home electricity, set up using this other technology. We've got something that can be a good home heating application. But I'm, I'm just bouncing around in my head the whole idea of it, does this become a competitive technology where one is compromised by the other or can both be pursued in a synergistic way? Well, I, 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 I don't have a clue at this stage, as I say. I, I don't know anything about it. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, Sterling, in the future, there's going to be some degree of competition and perhaps conflict. But what I, what I mean is, like, at the end of the day, it's the best ideas and the best technology that get there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the cost efficiency is another thing. You know, manufacturing, distribution, uh, its efficiency, what it does. All of these are factors, as you know, that... Uh, come into play and yeah so who knows who knows there's a lot out there as you know yeah if there's some synergy for us mm -hmm. I mean that's the thing if there's good, there needs to be some synergy yeah well very good uh, oh one quick question in the staying alive department would you be interested in coming on as a sponsor of PESN that we could list you on our sponsor page for somewhere along the region of either $100 a month or $1,000 a year minimum, and we would list the amount of the sponsorship along with that. Um, would help give you some additional coverage is, you know, here's somebody who likes what PBSN is doing, um, is supportive of, of their, you know, what they're doing and trying to bring awareness of these things and networking, et cetera. Um, is that something you'd be interested in doing? I tell you something, though, as soon as I start to make some money back from the ECAT, which I hope is towards the, you know, the end of this year, I'll be happy to put back into, you know, what you have done and, and be a, a major sponsor just, just to help uh, other future technologies keep mo moving forward. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I've, I've really put everything into the ECAT. I've, and my other businesses, of course, have been run down to, downhill. <laughs> For 14 months, I just focused totally on the ECAT. I haven't done anything else virtually. Uh -huh. So it's been a lot of my money, uh, all my savings, and my cash flow is reduced. So I'm now at a point where, you know, the ECAT is hopefully towards, you know, uh, six months, you know, we've got something happening with the ECAT. And then I'll be, uh, you'll be the first person that will sponsor, believe me. Okay. You know, with a good, by the way, with a, if we get something, a good sale, we'll, we'll contribute, you know, a, a, you know, a, a good one to, to, be, to begin with. You know, like I'll, I, if I made a sale, I'll give you $10,000 straight away and then become a, you know, yearly sponsor. Absolutely. Yeah, that'd be great. Well, put it this way, we're not going to forget you. I appreciate that. We've uh, eked out and squoze out just about everything we can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I think of the analogy of the woman in transition giving a birth to a baby, except this transition has lasted years, not hours. <laughs> right, exactly right. Yeah. You think, yeah, how can I keep doing this? Well, intuitively, we all feel something's going to shift this year. Mm -hmm. It really is. <sighs> Well, I thought it was going to shift 11 years ago. It's been two months away for 11 years. All right. Well, mate, appreciate all you're doing yeah. and keep up the great work. Yeah. Thanks for catching up. We'll speak to you soon, yeah? All right. Take care, Roger. Cheers. Bye.
You've been listening to Free Energy Now, brought to you by PES, Pure Energy Systems. You may access past archives and upcoming show info at freeenergynow.net. And join us for our daily news at freeenergynews.com. We invite you to see our directory of energy technologies at pesweekly.com. That's P-E-S-W-I-K-I.com. P-E-S, the Pure Energy Systems Information Network. Uh-huh. Where there's some slides that are shown. It, one of the questions I'm curious as you're selling these licenses around the world and people are not yet able to get a good um, data based um, input, are you take, putting money in escrow or how's that working? No, um, well, most of the people who have invested are friends of friends and family members and biz my own business associates. And so there hasn't been, or I've traveled and I've personally met them, and I give them all the available information, mm -hmm. and I make it very clear to them that basically this is risk capital, that this is still emerging uh, technology, and... Uh, and that, you know, the, the, the reason why the, the price is, re, you know, fairly reasonable, I mean, as you know, Rossi has been, that they're quite reasonably priced, these licenses, for what they potentially can be. Mm -hmm. And so people are not really risking too much. I mean, quite frankly, Sterling, like when I organized Africa, it's, you know, people are only risking, you know, ten fifteen thousand dollars $15,000, you know, and I've got it sprinkled over a whole group. Mm -hmm. So, and you know, they're just uh, friends of friends and colleagues and so forth. So nobody except me, I've, I'm the one who risked the most. You know, I've got like nearly, you know, $400,000 invested in, in all of this. Uh, I'm, I'm the largest risk taker, you know, in my group. And everybody else is just very, you know, small uh, nuts and seeds. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I've, I've made it very clear that it's, you know, it's risk capital, it's still emerging, we still haven't sold an ECAT. The, te the basic tension is, if it wasn't emerging, and if we sold one, then you could add a few more zeros to these uh, licenses, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that's basically being the general scenario, you know. And uh, it's just basically they buy equity uh, into a territory. And then, for instance, take Spain, we, we formed a company, and then everybody's issued uh, share certificates. Uh, when I organized Japan, you know, we're, we're forming a company in Singapore. And uh, so that's the way it's done. You know, we, we secure the license, we form a company, we issue share certificates and the equity, and then basically we, you know, it's an organic uh, movement, you know, we're we're slowly making, I'm slowly making contacts in all of these countries. Um, you know, I've got instances that are kind of left in the world uh -huh. that I'm still networking, you know. There's still, you know, a, a, a few things happening in Europe and uh, the Middle East. So um, I can always chat with them. Okay. So what's the latest with uh, in your department? Anything happening? Yeah, there's always cool stuff going on. Sure is. Um, the things take a lot longer, cost a lot more. Yep, yep. I'm very familiar with that scenario. <laughs> I think we all are. It's yeah. A, as you know, it's a lesson in patience, you know. Yeah, it is. We're all passionate about this. And we all want to see things move move as fast as possible, but, boy, you got to sometimes kick back and let things be, you know. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, the Rossi seems, he, the, the thing about Rossi, he's, he's always moving forward uh, bit by bit, as you've probably been tracking, um, you know, uh, so that's that's good news. Uh, you know, he's, he's got, apparently he's got, you know, uh, an ECAT on its way to America. He's got a big USA partner now. From yeah. what he's been blogging about, and he's he's personally told you know a few of free energy now.
Imagine a world in which each home has its own power generator that obtains its energy in such a way that no fuel has to be added. Imagine every vehicle being able to run without ever stopping for fuel. Imagine each appliance having its own power source that never has to be recharged. That is the world of the future. Join with us now as we track our progress towards such a world. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Sterling Allen. You can join us online at freeenergynow.net, where you can find a list of past guests, download those interviews, and read the stories associated with those shows. On May 14, 2013, I had a casual interview with Roger Green, CEO of ECAT Australia. He has been involved in helping secure distributor licenses for Andre Rossi's ECAT for many territories worldwide. Following are some excerpts from our conversation. You can find Roger online at ecataustralia.com. That's e-cataustralia.com. Hi, Stelly. Hey, Roger. How you doing? Very good. I do have some other licenses, if that's the case, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it's every like everything. We just you know need more data and more independent you know tests and. That's what the customers want now. They, we've got, I've got serious customers around the planet, but you know, they're, they're you know, it's 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 a risk for people until they see one actually, you know, in a real life situation, and nobody's prepared to take the first step with that. Or at least we haven't found anybody yet. Mm -hmm. But uh, Rossi guarantees that everything's going to work, and as you know, he's made some headway with the hot cat. Mm -hmm. That report's supposed to be coming out soon. It was due to come out soon. Yeah, we had a good interview with him um, a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if you listened to that. I've, heard, I, I've been on the road, but I heard reports of it. Some people, you know, emailed me saying they, it was, it was yeah, how did, how did it, do you have a recording of it? Yeah, if you go to PESN.com yeah. and you go back a couple of weeks, you'll see the, I did a report of our interview where uh -huh. I covered all the key points, and then there's also, uh, you can listen to the audio, actually it's a YouTube video that you watch of the presentation, 